You always can hear about the seven wonders of the world. There's multiple different lists from the original seven ancient wonders to natural wonders to wonders of engineering. In this video I'll be making my own list examining seven engineering wonders of Ireland, counting down from seven to one. This is simply my opinion, I'm not an engineer, so if you think other places should have been included instead, please comment below. So what are the seven engineering wonders of Ireland? The Boyne Viaduct crosses the river of the same name in the town of Drogheda in County Louth. The 30 metre high bridge carries the main Dublin to Belfast railway line. Previous to its construction, passengers had to travel through the town to another station on the other side of the deep and wide estuary. Engineer John Benjamin McNeil, with the help from Bindon Blood Stoney, designed the bridge by experimenting with the lashes of cast iron girders to minimise the weight of the bridge on the swift riverbed below. Construction began in 1853 and was completed in 1855, and at 155 metres it was the longest bridge of its kind in the world. In the 1930s the cast iron lashes was replaced by steel and the railway was converted to a single track. Location at the southern tip of County Wexford is Hookhead Lighthouse. It may look like any other lighthouse but it's special as it claims to be the oldest operating lighthouse in the world, though this one in Spain also claims it. Marking the eastern entrance to Waterford Harbour, it was constructed in 1172 by Strongbow's son-in-law William Marshall. However, it is believed that there has been a beacon on the headland since the Monk de Voine in the 5th century. Made of local limestone and whitewashed with lime, the tower is 35 metres high with walls up to 4 metres thick. Over the centuries, the light transitioned from coal fire to oil lantern to gas lights to the remote controlled electrical light of today, operated from Dunleary in County Dublin. In the mid 1800s, the wire telegraph using Morse code was taking off as a new form of long distance communication so American businessman Cyrus Westfield took it upon himself to build the first line across the Atlantic Ocean, a distance of over 3,000 kilometres. After multiple failed attempts, the first successful cable was completed on the 5th of August 1858 between Newfoundland in Canada and Valencia Island in County Kerry. It broke after just three weeks, but another permanent one via Valencia was finished in 1866 with a new system made by Belfast native William Thompson who because of his work on the cable was knighted as Baron Kelvin. The Kelvin temperature scale is named after him. For the next 100 years, Valencia served a vital role in global communication, until the station there was finally shut down in 1966. Unfortunately, only a plaque remains on the site today. Continuing on in communications history, Italian engineer Guglielmo Maiconi is well known for the creation of his radio-based wireless telegraph system sending the first transatlantic signal from Cornwall to Newfoundland in 1901. He later decided to move his European station further west, and he chose location at Derrigim La Bargue in County Galway. His station here opened in 1907, with signalling commencing between Connemara and Nova Scotia in Canada. The massive site had a powerhouse with six boilers, and a system of eight wooded masts over 60 metres high. In 1922, during the Civil War, the station was destroyed by anti-treaty forces, and only ruins remain today. This bog is also the same spot where Alcock and Brown completed the first successful transatlantic flight in 1919. Alcock decided to land, OK, crash here, after recognising the masts of the Myconi station. Today, Derrigim La Bog is a signature discovery point on the Wild Atlantic Way. Standing in the grounds of the elegant Burr Castle in County Offaly is the Leviathan of Parsons Town. This Newtonian style reflecting telescope was built for William Parsons, 3rd Earl of Ross in 1845, and until 1917 it was the largest telescope in the world. Supported by two 12 metre high walls on each side, the telescope weighed 12 tonnes with the mirror weighing 3 tonnes. With the telescope, Parsons tried to figure out what nebulae were, discovering one which was a spiral of stars which he called the Whirlpool Nebula. By the early 20th century, the telescope was becoming redundant and falling apart, but it was reconstructed in the 1990s. However, this wasn't the end for astronomy in Burr. Today, the Ilofi radio telescope stands on the castle grounds, a node in a European white network which can observe the universe in unprecedented detail at low radio frequencies. Located just north of Limerick City, but in County Clare, is the Ina Crusher Hydroelectric Power Station. 
Constructed by German firm Siemens Schuckers, it was completed in 1929 at a cost of one-fifth of the newly independent Irish state's annual budget. The Shannon scheme allowed for the electrification of rural Ireland by generating twice as much electricity as the state needed. Construction included creating channels to divert the Maishi River, ladders to allow fish to swim upstream and the Paishin Weir which controls the flow to the station. When it was completed, Einek Russia was the largest hydroelectric plant in the world and was described as an eighth wonder of the world. It has directly inspired the Hoover Dam in the USA and gave confidence to many developing nations around the world to go ahead with similar schemes. The 85 megawatt plant could once power 90% of Ireland's energy needs. Today it's only around 2%, but the legacy of the social and economic benefits it brought to this nation remains to this day. Before revealing number one, here are seven honourable mentions. The Rose Fitzgerald Kennedy Bridge, Samson and Goliath Cranes, the Shaky Bridge, the Brig Greystones Railway, Fastnet Lighthouse, the Walls of Derry, and the Lighthake Monorail. So what is, in my opinion, Ireland's greatest wonder of engineering? Located beside the River Boyne in County Meath, the passage tomb of Newgrange is a marvel of ancient engineering. Dating from around 3200 BC in the Neolithic period, the structure is older than Stonehenge and the Pyramids of Egypt, and dates from around the same time as the final extinction of the Woolly Mammoth. The inner chamber of the mound is aligned with the rising sun of the winter solstice, meaning that every year the sun shines through the roof box and floods the chamber with light, an incredible feat of engineering for over 5,000 years ago. Some of the material to build the Aishimisha in Diamisha megalith came from Laos and as far away as counties down in Wicklow. Megalithic ash can be found around the monument, such as the highly decorated entrance stone. It's still a mystery what exactly the site was used for. Human and animal bones were found here, so it's likely to have had a burial as well as a ceremonial or religious function. Today the complex of Bruna Boinia, which includes neighbouring megalithic tombs such as Nouth and Douth, is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So there are my seven engineering wonders of Ireland. Do you agree with these or would you rather see other places included on the list? What other seven wonders lists could I make? Answer in the comments below. Finally, I want to recommend the book Ingenious Island by the late Mary Mulverhill which was republished a few years ago. It takes a county by county look of Irish mysteries and marvels, ranging from geographic and geological oddities, engineering and archaeological wonders, scientific and industrial advances, and historical and social curiosities. It's an encyclopedia slash travel guide about anything and everything in Ireland. I randomly stumbled across it in my local Eason's, and if you like the Irish content that I make on this channel, you'll love this book. I hope you learned something about each of the seven sites in this video, and are maybe even inspired to visit them. Subscribe to learn more about Ireland and the world.